Hi everyone, I'm Thomas Boney, editor of the Crestview News Bulletin. Welcome to Editor's Notes. Today we're going to focus on a letter to the editor we received from Bob Hollingshead. The letter reads, It is not too difficult to picture the image of Martin Luther King Jr. before the Lincoln Memorial shedding a tear over the headline, Chambers' first black president takes command. Sad that after all these years, our lives are still missing the elusiveness of Dr. King's I Have a Dream. To the degree that the headline misses what Dr. King wanted for his children and Alicia Booker, we should all be crying. First of all, thank you, Bob, for writing. Centrally, I do agree with him. I understand where he's coming from. If we're all equal, after all, why should we be sort of beating a drum that hey, this is the first black person to do this. Now, I will say that newspapers track trends. They track milestones. They track things like that. So while personally I understand where he's coming from, and I do agree with him, the newspaper job is to track that milestone. So I can't let my personal views get in the way of that milestone being recorded as perhaps it should be. We need to remember that this is not so much of a milestone for today as much as it is a milestone for the larger history and the timeline of Crestview. When you look at the Carver Hill Museum's website, you will see that there is a past. The school was segregated. It was closed in 1969 as part of the school district's plan to integrate whites and blacks, all the races, together. Our reporter Matthew Brown covered a group of Northwest Florida State College students who went to Carver Hill Museum right here in Crestview on Saturday. And a lot of these people didn't know about Carver Hill before. They said they really enjoyed meeting the people there who were guest speakers, who actually helped make history. Among those guest speakers, the Funiac Springs resident and pastor Tyrone Livingston wrote us now announcing that correctly or brought us. He was the, quote, first black honor guard and one of the original 13 Kennedy honor guards. He identifies himself that way. Is it really then so unusual for the news bulletin to refer to Alicia Booker as the first black president? Thank you everyone for tuning in. Tune in next week. There will be a new Editor's Notes. I'm so glad to have started this. I hope it can bring the community and the newspaper closer together. Have a great day.